Okay, so we're here doing the Lab 10 material. This is uh, this section we'll be looking at the structure of the neuron. And we have a multipolar motor neuron here. We can tell it's multipolar because it has several dendrites. Okay, so when you have a multipolar neuron, that means you have more than one dendritic process. Okay, so these are the dendrites out here, these structures that look like uh, little green branches. And they're branched because we're getting lots of surface area. Okay, so a neuron really is dependent on information coming to it, so it will give a lot of its surface area to make connections with other neurons, and that's what the dendrites are devoted to, that surface area, so that they can receive information from other neurons. Okay, now this section that has the nucleus in it is the cell body, okay, and you can see the nucleus here. This red material is a representation of the rough endoplasmic reticulum, which has a special name in neurons as the Nissel bodies. You may have heard that in lecture. Okay, you can also see that there's other organelles and um, cytoskeletal structures in here as well. Okay, and then uh, once we get here, we have the axon portion. Okay, and the gray is actually the axon. And the yellow that you have here is the little bit of myelin that's left on this model. We'll see a better example of myelin when we get over to the next model. Okay, so again, the job of the dendrites is to receive information with surface area for contacts from other cells. The job of the cell body is this is our manufacturing area of the cell. Uh, so we're going to be producing our energy here. We're going to be keeping our DNA here. We're going to be producing most of the material that we're using inside of the cell and even secreting from the cell. So a lot of our neurotransmitters are going to be produced here. And then they'll be shipped out through this long process, the axon. And the axon's job is to generate action potentials and transmit those action potentials to the tips of the axons, which are the axon terminals. Okay. Uh, the other, another name for the axon terminals is the terminal boutons. Okay, so they look kind of button-like. The so French and button in French is bouton. Okay, so it has this kind of terminal area or foot-like structure. Okay, so the action potential would come here to the axon terminals, and that would cause release of chemical through this chemical synapse to the muscle over here. So the red is depicting a piece of skeletal muscle. So that's why we said that this was a multipolar motor neuron because it is synapsing with muscle. So if you have uh, a neuron that is connected to an effector like skeletal muscle, that's a motor neuron, okay? Let's come to the next model. This is a little fancier. Okay, and this is also a multipolar motor neuron. And in this depiction, we have uh, the cell body well represented here. And you can see a lot more of the organelle structure here. Here's the nucleus with uh, nucleoli in there. Okay, you can see a nice representation of the rough ER here. You see a Golgi apparatus. Okay, you can see mitochondria. So it really looks like a cell in here. You don't see as much of the dendrites. Okay, so you can see where the dendrites are. Here's a piece of a dendrite, and the tips have been cut off here. Again, another piece where a dendrite would have been attached. Another one here, another one here, extending out. You can kind of see where it's going in the picture. And there's another one back on this side. What they are showing you here is how many uh, other neurons are in contact with this neuron. And all these little tips that you see here that are ending in these little flare endings, these are axons with axon terminals. Okay, so you can see there's one, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight different synapses uh, from axon terminals that are present on this one neuron. And most of them are present on the dendrites. Okay, so this is where we're using our dendritic surface area to receive information from other cells. Okay, so we receive our information. <clears throat> uh, we're going to make our, have our manufacturing center here in the cell body. And then here is where our axon starts. This would be the axon hillock. And this is where our action potential would be initiated. Okay, so our action potential would start moving through our axon. And you can see here, we're going along the axon, all of a sudden part of the axon is covered. Okay, and this yellow structure that looks kind of like we took a crescent roll and wrapped it around a hot dog many different times, that is where we have a Schwann cell. Okay, and the Schwann cell has wrapped its membrane multiple times around this axon to create the myelin sheath. So as we look into the kind of cutaway portion here, you can see there's all these layers of yellow. Those layers of yellow are the layers of the Schwann cell's membrane that are making the myelin sheath. Okay, and that insulates this segment of the axon. Okay, the Schwann cell is still alive, it still has cytoplasm, and this orange <clears throat> represents the cytoplasm of the Schwann cell. Okay, so this layer is referred to as the neurolemma because this is where the Schwann cell um, organelles and cytoplasm and its nucleus are all located. Okay, now we get past the edge of this Schwann cell and you can see we have the axon exposed again and then we start another Schwann cell here with its myelin sheath. Okay, so this is a node of Ranvier. Okay, so when you have an action potential that starts in a myelinated axon, it flows kind of externally until you get to the myelin, and then it flows internally until you get to an exposed area again, and then the channels open up, the sodium rushes in, and then it flows internally again until you get to the next node of Ranvier. Okay, so because you have this uh, saltatory conduction, as it's called, where the action potential skips segments of the axon as far as needing to flow down those segments of the membrane, the transmission is faster and it maintains its sig signal strength all the way through until you get to places where your axon terminals aren't here. Again, we're looking at a muscle fiber, a set of muscle fibers here. So this is another multipolar motor neuron. Okay, and just a reminder, if you only have two processes, one axon and one dendrite, that's a bipolar neuron. If you have just one process that has to do both the job of the dendrite and the axon, that's a unipolar neuron. Okay, our last model is uh, a more detailed look at the axon terminal. So this segment up here is the axon. Okay, and this is the axon terminal, and we've been had the structure cut open here so that we can see uh, some of the internal structure. Here's a beautiful little mitochondria here, okay, and some cytoskeletal elements. And then you can see all these little spheres in here, and some of them have been cut open, so you can see there's little dots inside of them. These are the synaptic vesicles. Okay, so our action potential would be coming through the axon using voltage regulated sodium channels to allow depolarization and voltage regulated potassium channels to allow repolarization. And eventually our action potential is going to get to the axon terminal. Okay, here we switch to voltage regulated calcium channels. And those calcium channels open up, the calcium rushes into the axon terminal. That causes the vesicles to be moved to the uh, membrane of the axon terminal and for those vesicles to fuse with that membrane. 
and that causes exocytosis. And you can actually see some of the vesicles here have been caught mid exocytosis. And if we look at the undersurface, we can see there are several other vesicles that are in the process of exocytosing their contents because you can see all the little green dots on the surface. So the neurotransmitter that's being released here, since this is um, a model of the neuromuscular junction, is acetylcholine. And acetylcholine is going to be deposited into this space, the synaptic cleft. It's going to diffuse across this space, and it's going to reach this surface, which since this is representing, again, a neuromuscular junction, is the motor end plate. Okay, and this is a specialized area of the sarcolemma where you have chemically regulated sodium channels. Okay, so the chemical that regulates these channels is acetylcholine. The acetylcholine binds, that causes the channels to open. Sodium rushes in, this membrane becomes depolarized, and we get a new action potential generated in our sarcolemma. Okay? So remember that because this is real life and we have gravity, we don't actually see a synaptic cleft on this model. So you have to kind of either imagine it hovering here, we're using your Harry Potter magic to make it happen, or just, you know, as you're looking at it, hold it up a little bit so you can see axon terminal, synaptic cleft, motor end plate.